uh, as, as uh, Mr. Vine just uh, said, I am Sonia Davis Lewis, and I am a survivor. Thank you. I can finally say that without shame, as if the burden of the shame was mine to bear. Being victimized and treated like you're less than human is something nobody wants to share that. We want to keep it in silence and in secret because we don't want anybody to think that we're weak. And that's the perception of most victims because I often hear people say, oh, that wouldn't happen to me. Or that couldn't happen to me. How could you stay? And I stayed for 18 years. But I'll say this, and I often say this to people who ask that question. I didn't become a victim by happenstance. I was conditioned to be a victim. You see, I was sexually molested at eight years old by somebody that I trusted. I watched domestic violence in my home and in my family for most of my life. So that was normal to me. Domestic violence equated to love for me. So that's why I stayed. I'm gonna share a story, one story with you. Um, I was at the Columbia Mall in the early 2000s, shopping for Easter for my boys. As I perused through the store, my abuser came up behind me and grabbed me by the back of my shirt and drug me out of the mall. As I tried to ditch the things that I had in my hand because I didn't want to be accused of stealing, I was drugged out of the store and into the mall parking lot where I was punched in the face I was slapped, I was kicked, I was down on the ground, crouching against my car. When all of a sudden I saw four legs come up and I thought to myself, somebody is here to help me. And I was so grateful because I was in so much pain and more than the pain was the shame that somebody was gonna recognize me and see me. All of a sudden these two security guards from the mall grabbed my abuser and they were holding his arms and I was able to brace myself and stand up. And they said to him, you can't do that here. You have to take her home to do that. How many of you know that that's exactly what he did? He took me home and he finished what he started. What set that off? He said that I was smiling at a clerk that I, if you offered me a million dollars, I couldn't tell you who he was talking about. But you see, there's no rationalization to domestic violence. It's as, off, it's as if they all read from the same book because the behaviors are all the same. It's never about what you do or what you don't do. You can't fix them. And that was always my thought, that if I just loved him a little more, if I just took care of the kids a little better, if I just cooked dinner, you know, every day and kept the house clean, that it would be better. But in 18 years, it never got better. I went to work every day, black eyes and bruises. My coworkers made fun of me. They laughed, they told jokes. When I walked in the cafeteria, I was the butt of jokes. But I made it through all of that because when I was in grad school, one night I was leaving class and see I had to rush home because he knew what time I got out of class and he knew how long it took me to drive from the camp campus of Webster University to my home up in the summit. So I was I, I, hesitant when my uh, instructor asked me to stay after class because she wanted to talk to me. So I was rushing to get out and there was somebody else taking her time and talking to her and I went to walk past her and all she did was slip me something in my hand. And I took it and went to my car and when I got there, it was a card that said Sister Care. The very next Saturday morning, I was punched in the face because I wanted to go to a soccer game for my goddaughter. And I took that opportunity to take that card that I had hidden away in my book bag and I contacted Sister Care. And they helped me. She helped me develop a safety plan so that I could leave. 
She went to court with me so that I could get my restraining order. And I'm so thankful for organizations like Sister Care and the Sheriff's Department. They gave me an advocate and they stood with me. And people think I'm 15 years removed from my domestic violence. 15 years a survivor, but it's not over. It's not over, I battle every day. My abuser often says to other people, why can't she just get over it? It's been 15 years, why can't she just get over it? But some things hit you so hard and they hurt you so bad, you'll never get over it. I'm irrevocably broken. But I, here I am, I'm surviving, and I'm thriving, and I'm determined to move forward each and every day. That's why I had to get over the shame of it and stand here and, and say, that's not my shame to bear. But I got out, and I survived, and you can too. And I want to encourage anybody that's in that situation. Because see, I wore it well. Two things that victims of domestic violence are great at, keeping secrets and telling lies. In my house, it was always told to me, what goes on in this house, it stays in this house. But see, I got two daughters, and I didn't carry on that tradition. I told my two girls, if something is hurting you, you better come tell me, because I'm gonna fix it. You don't go home. Home is supposed to be security and safety. It's not supposed to be a place where you drive down the street and you cry because you're almost there. I am an example. That's why I'm willing to put myself out here to tell my story, to get over the shame and the humiliation I felt at being a victim, because I know that I'm not the only one. I used to believe that I was, but today I know I'm not the only one. But I got out, and I'm thanking God every day for those advocates at Richland County Sheriff Department, for Sister Care who stood beside me every step of the way. And as I said, 15 years removed, I'm still in counseling forever suffering from PTSD. But yeah, here I am, I'm here. I wake up every morning and I give myself a hug because I made it. I'm my own hero. So I say to anybody else out there who's suffering and going through what I went through, you too. There are people and places that can help you. You can reach out to me, I'm on Facebook. I'm always an open book, willing and able to help and there are other places such as Sister Care, and I, you know, I know there are many other places, but that was where I found my freedom, and that's why I will forever be thankful to them. And I hope I'm encouraging somebody to step up and step out today, find you, and fall in love with you, and then you can walk your path and live your truth. Thank you.